Dr. Peterson, I'm really hoping you can share your thoughts on the Vegas shooting. Yeah. Well, what I would do is recommend the biblical lecture I did on Cain and Abel, I would say, because I think that that's a good summary of the state of mind that somebody has to be in in order to do what was done at Las Vegas. So you have to be very, very embittered by life in order to do that sort of thing. And you have to be searching for revenge, I would say. And it's not, you know, you might think, well, it's only revenge on other people because you've developed hatred for people, but it's deeper than that. It's not just hatred for people. I would say it's hatred for being itself and, and the desire to take revenge on being for the outrage of the tragedy and suffering that's associated with being. Um, and maybe the tragedy and suffering that's been part and parcel of your own life. And that makes you embittered. And then past embittered becomes outraged. And past outraged becomes, well, homicidal or even genocidal. And that's a terrible state of mind to be in. It's a hellish state. Um, I believe that the best way to conceptualize the state of mind that someone has to be in in order to do something like the Columbine shootings, for example, or what happened in Las Vegas is that you're really, and I, you have to speak about it in religious languages, you're really out for revenge against God for the outrage of creation. That's what it looks like to me. And, and that's a state of mind that's truly hellish. And you can get there by brooding long enough. Now, it's also possible, I mean, this guy didn't have any previous history, criminal history or anything like that. And he's pretty old. So, you know, there's also, also also the possibility of some kind of neurological pathology that that might be characteristic of him, you know, some degenerative neurological disease. There was a kid years ago at the University of Texas at Austin who climbed up on the tower there and shot a number of people with a high-powered rifle. And he had a fast-growing tumor on his hypothalamus and had reported like these being overcome with extreme feelings of rage. And so that's another possibility. But I would say the uh, embitterment hypothesis is the strongest one. I would also say, too, I, I noticed that Steven Pinker tweeted this today, is that one of the ways of controlling this sort of thing would be for the press to agree not, for there to be a blanket agreement, not to publicize the name or any other identity markers of the people who do the shooting. Because there's also this really, what would you call it, arrogance. It's a kind of arrogance and pride, last-ditch arrogance and pride that, that is associated with the fantasies that drive this sort of behavior. And the fantasy is something like, well, after I do this, everyone will sure know the, who, who the hell I was, you know, even though maybe I was ignored or unhappy when I was alive. After I'm dead, everybody's going to know who I was and what I did. And, you know, so there's this underground desire for fame. I guess it's notoriety, but notoriety might be preferable to being ignored. And so, you know, there's a lot of talk about gun control, and that's understandable, especially with regards to automatic rifles. Um, <clears throat> Although I also understand why the people who are gun owners are afraid of, 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 of allowing what they regard as one of their fundamental rights to be infringed upon. Um, but it would certainly be useful if we stop giving people who do this sort of thing uh, $100 million worth of free publicity and all the notoriety they can manage. So, you know, that's another way of thinking about controlling it. So...